Please join me to pray the Regina Celli. Queen of heaven rejoice, Alleluia. For him whom you were made worthy to bear, Alleluia. Has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has deigned to give joy to the whole world, grant we beseech you that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we attain the joys of eternal life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good evening. We welcome you as we celebrate the Eucharist today, fourth Sunday of Easter. We are also celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday, and the fifth and the 57th World Day of Prayer for Vocations. This celebration reminds us of our vocation to follow Christ and the importance and beauty of the call to the ordained ministry and to the consecrated life. Our presider for this Mass is Father Percival Tayem, OFM. Thank you. 
humility and generosity in our hearts, we begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. In our gospel today, Jesus identifies himself as the shepherd and the gatekeeper. And he is a shepherd, his sheep will listen to his voice. We are God's children, and we have to admit that sometimes, if not most of the time, we don't listen to our shepherd. And so, in today's celebration, if you want once again to belong into his sheepfold, let us recognize his voice and approach him with humility and ask for his mercy and forgiveness. And so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Glory of God the Father, 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whom over the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord, the Lord is, my is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gave me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths, for in his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, 
we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you have gone stray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief or a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. And the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice but they will not follow a stranger they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of a stranger although Jesus used this figure of speech the Pharisees did not realize what he's trying to tell them so Jesus said again Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, all of us have the opportunity to become leaders because we have the people to care, to tend, and to lead. For example, our Pope is the leader of the Universal Church. The Bishop is the leader of the local church called Diocese. The parish priest, like Father Rio, is the leader of the parish. Lay leaders and also leaders in the respective religious organizations, government officials, managers and parents, and others are leaders in their own field of activities. Every fourth Sunday of Easter is called Good Shepherd Sunday. It is because the readings used talk about the Good Shepherd, which Jesus identifies himself. We may ask, what is the work of the shepherd? The shepherd is the individual who spent most of his life with his sheep. It was the, his responsibility to protect the sheep against the thieves, robbers, wolves, and other predators. The shepherd made sure that the sheep 
had sufficient water to drink and grass to eat. The shepherd's life was of constant movement. After the sheep ate all the grass in one pasture, the shepherd moved to another green pastures. Since the sheep were his closest companions and friends, most likely the shepherd came to know his sheep well. He knew which sheep or which sheep were docile, and he also recognized the unruly and stubborn sheep. Yet the shepherd was committed to caring for each other of the sheep, even the aggravating ones. Usually, the shepherd had a very strong bond with his sheep. He not only was responsible for them, he truly cared about his sheep and perhaps even came to love them. In some ways, the sheep became the shepherd's family. The bond between the shepherd and the sheep was very strong and real. Of this and real because the sheep would only follow the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd is always willing to risk his life for his sheep. Jesus in our gospel, gospel today identifies himself as a shepherd. He is our good shepherd. Jesus is stick with us no matter what. He is committed to caring for us and leading us away from any forms of danger. Jesus comes and finds us when we are lost and afraid. Jesus will keep looking for us until he finds us. Jesus, as our good shepherd, always ready to lay down his life for us ready to defend life, ready to spread life, ready to give his whole life for his sheep, and for you and for me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are all special that our shepherd, Jesus, cannot afford to lose any of us such that he will live the 99 just to look for the lost one, even if it would entail risking his own life. What a loving, caring, compassionate, and merciful God we have. A true leader models his or her leadership in the Good Shepherd. That is why in our Gospel today, Jesus give us a criteria of a true and genuine leadership. First, a leader must be dedicated. A true leader is ready to give his life for all, no matter what. Unlike our modern leaders, for example, some politicians who stung are so sweet or even sweeter than sugar. Government officials and other leaders, even in the line of religious people, who take advantage and enflesh themselves instead of tending and looking after people's welfare. A dedicated leader, I believe, must possess the so-called four C's. And what are the forces? First, competent. Being competent is not only referred to as competent in leading the people, but he or she must competent with God, that he or she has the knowledge of God. If that leader will consider himself or herself as a sheep, to the shepherd of God, who is God himself, then this leader, being a God-center, 
has always this balanced way of leading people. But if he knows God without leading his faith in God, therefore we can say that he is a weak leader. Second C, commitment. Being committed that is giving oneself for the sake of others. He or she is willing to share his or her treaties. And what are the treaties? His time, talent, and treasure. Another C, consecration. Which means that as a leader, they are set apart for the service of God. His or her purpose, why he or she serves the people, because this is the best way on how to serve God. The last C is conversion. A leader being converted is always ready to forgive whatever wrongdoings others have done against you. The second criterion is knowledge. The true leader knows his or her people. It is mentioned in John 10, verse, chapter 10, verse 3. He calls each of his sheep by name and lead them. Knowing in biblical term is more than intellectual knowledge. It also includes knowing them by their names, works, ambition, plans, feelings, sharing their life situation, background, and identifying oneself in this struggle. I have this kind of feeling when I was assigned in one of the parish in Quezon City and stayed there for six years. And I got familiar with the people precisely because I did not confine myself in the four walls of our friary. I always find time to listen and journey with the parishioners within the parish I'm looking after at, even to the point of owning their own struggles in life, their victories and failures as well. And for me, this is very, very important to have knowledge with these people whom we are, whom are entrusted to us is very, very important in such a way that is one way of building a deep relationship with these people entrusted to us, to our parishioners, so to say. Lastly, a leader must be an exemplar. A leader must be an example in his or her community by words and deeds. I remember when I was still a student friar, I met an old woman in a place where I was assigned for immersion in Hospice de San Jose, and he says, Brother Percy, once you will become a priest, we will address you Father. And I said, why Father? because you have a big role to play as a shepherd. And he said, you know what father is all about? And I said, no. And then she, she said, this is what father all of, is all about. F, he said, stands for father. A is R, T is the, H, holiest, E, examples, R, regarding, as spirituality. So she said, fathers are the holiest example regarding spirituality. I took it seriously, but I said to her, well, not only me and not only you, but all of us. We must follow the way of Jesus' leadership, I said. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the best time for us to reflect and to look at ourselves together in this Mass, especially in this reading, that God, once again, is reminding us of our responsibility 
as a shepherd to those people who are entrusted to us? I think the best question that I can post to each and every one of us to reflect is that, have we cared enough the flock God has entrusted to us? Stand to profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Father that he may take care of us and raise up good shepherds to tend the people of God. In every petition response be, Lord, listen to your people. Lord, listen to your people. May our Holy Father Francis, the church leaders, continue to be true shepherds, leading their flocks to good pastures, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Like Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who loved and died for his people, may our political and civil leaders govern in such a way that our time, marked by many signs of violence and death, may see the establishing of peace and a culture of life. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. Me young people, following the good examples of their elders, take their place in society with a sense of responsibility, service, and respect for the dignity of its person. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. Today, World Day of Prayer for Vocations. We pray that there be more young men and women who respond to God's call to the priesthood and consecrated life and to give themselves totally to the cause of the kingdom, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. May those who are sick and at the moment of death receive the comfort of the Lord so that they may not fear but hold on to good shepherd who died to give life to all of us, we pray. Lord, listen to your people. Let us pray for an urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to your people. Father, grant us the desire to serve our brothers and sisters so that when our chief shepherd appear, we shall receive the unfading crown of glory. We ask this of you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, that the sacrifice of mine and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal, constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the older order destroyed a universe, cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts, in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our Apostolic Administrator, all the bishops, religious men and women, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Francis, Claire, Anthony, and Padre Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, loving and compassionate Father, from every forms of evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to us, your brothers and sisters today, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Sisters and brothers in Christ, here is Jesus, <clears throat> our good shepherd, the Lamb of God who continuously love us, even though we are unfaithful. Happy are we who are invited in this holy banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Up of a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us through your death, and still we celebrate. And let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Keep your family safe, O Lord, we pray, and grant them the abundance of your mercies that they may find growth through the teachings and the gifts of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of our loving and compassionate God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, our celebration has been offered. We now all go and continue to follow our Good Shepherd, Jesus himself. Thanks be to God.